Mole. Hi, I'm David Smith and this is Valley Mole, the show that digs in and around Silicon Valley, searching for insights into technology news stories, the patent wars and the business of startups. BBC reports that Asian electronics firm ProView has accused Apple of deception in the way it acquired rights to the name iPad. In California court filings, ProView claims Apple created a UK registered special purpose company called IP Application Development Limited, iPad L. So why are shell companies formed and IP like trademarks, especially patents, traded in stealth mode with anonymous buyers? Well, one reason, and this is a very good reason for Apple, is that they want to prevent competitors learning of their product directions. Obviously, if Apple goes out and uh, knowingly and in public view buys the name iPad, then there's going to be speculation that Apple is going to release an iPad. Now, this is an issue that's come up with Apple. Apple is very, very secretive about its new products, new product directions. Now, another reason is that it may want to prevent disclosure of weaknesses to competitors and other holders of patents, for example. If Apple is buying patents in a particular area, there's a good chance that it's, that might be a good place to attack if you're holding patents in that area. So they just don't want to disclose weaknesses. Obviously, a company like Apple with very, very deep pockets, uh, sometimes Apple has more money than the whole US Treasury. Well, if, if you know the buyer is uh, a company like Apple with very deep pockets, you're going to probably put up the price if you're the seller. So it helps them negotiate better terms by shielding their identity. Now, another reason, especially in patents, is that keeping the identity of the buyer from the seller can prevent infringement related lawsuits. So why are buyers like Apple concerned about triggering potential lawsuits when they disclose their identity when they're acquiring patents? Now, there's a possibility, the reason is there's a possibility that the buyer is also an infringer. If you're buying patents and you're an operating company like Apple, there's a very good chance that you're potentially infringing those patents. So we see sometimes the buyer and the seller enter a negotiation. If they can't agree on terms, the, the negotiations end, but then the patent seller brings lawsuit against the buyer for infringement. We have seen this happen. And we have seen buyers that following an experience like this in future, they want to remain totally anonymous when they're entering into patent purchase discussions with a patent holder. So that's the situation with buyers. Buyers want to remain anonymous in patent acquisitions and actually here as we see in trademarks as well. But what about sellers? Why are sellers concerned about triggering infringement related lawsuits when they're selling patents? Well, and actually trademarks with a reasonable fear of a claim of infringement. The buyer can bring a lawsuit for declaratory judgment for the court to declare there's no infringement. Now, the issue here is that the potential infringer, if there's a cloud of uncertainty created, if there's, you may just send a letter to the company saying, we have some patents here for sale. You may email them or call them up. But if the potential buyer can, can see a reasonable fear that you're going to bring a claim of infringement in future, they can bring the lawsuit first. Not only can they bring the lawsuit first, but they're encouraged to bring the lawsuit first because that gives them an advantage in choosing the venue. Patents and trademarks are creatures of federal law 
and you can generally bring your case in many different states and different districts of the federal court. Some districts, like the Eastern District of Texas, are favorites for plaintiffs. So a defendant may want to bring the suit in a district that's more friendly to defendants. So in this case, the, uh, the patent potential buyer would bring, or the potential defendant in a lawsuit would bring the suit first, requesting the court for declaratory judgment. And it's mandatory, basically, for the patent holder to then answer and face the defendant in court if they ever want to pursue that patent claim. There's another curious uh, situation here that really means a lot of these transactions are undertaken under a shroud of uh, secrecy. Uh, the buyers, if they are aware of a patent, if a company knowingly infringes a patent, the damages can be multiplied three times. So there's triple damages for knowingly infringing rather than unwittingly infringing. So you'll, you will find that patent attorneys representing companies and uh, anyone representing a company that's selling products doesn't want to hear about patents. They don't want to receive patent numbers because this can place them on notice of the patent and could be used against them in future for multiplying any potential damages in a lawsuit by three. Triple damages for knowingly infringing when you're on notice. So they don't want to be on notice. There's also, if you're a patent attorney, a duty to disclose patents you're aware of to the patent office when you're filing new applications. So if you're filing applications for a client and you've been made aware of a, a patent that may relate to that application, may constitute prior art, for example, you have a duty, if you're a patent attorney, to disclose that information to the patent office. So patent attorneys don't want to be sent lists of patents because that puts them on notice and then triggers this duty to disclose all those patents to the patent office. Now, shell companies, trusts and subsidiaries are often used by patent buyers to acquire because it helps them keep the identity of the true owner of the patents from the marketplace, from the seller. When you file a patent, you have to, or when you acquire a patent, that information that you've acquired the patent is recorded in the assignment database at the patent office, and that's publicly available information. You can look up a patent and look up who actually owns the patent today through public information at the USPTO and actually on Google and many other sites. So companies that want to hide the fact that they're holding patents often form a subsidiary company, a shell company, and they hold the patents through that company. So it's very, it's often it's, you're unable to determine who really owns the patents. If the patent holder wants to remain anonymous, there are ways they can do it through these shell companies. And obviously it's a good way of restricting um, companies from uh, bringing lawsuits against you if you're holding, if you're totally anonymous and no one knows that you're actually holding those patents, they don't know that you, uh, that, that difficult for them to, to find you as a potential infringer for other patents. Well, now we formed a trading exchange here at uh, Tynex for trading in patents and we are actively representing buyers and sellers and brokering, facilitating patent transactions. Well, how do we do that if we have to keep the buyer and the seller anonymous? Basically, we've built our whole system in order to, to cater to this anonymity and the fact that the buyers particularly want to remain anonymous. Essentially, we can keep the buyer anonymous throughout the transaction. And this is what the buyers often want, as we've seen with this uh, case of Apple buying the iPad trademark. And we do this, our listings, if you come to our site, you'll be able to see that the listings are uh, anonymous. You don't get any patent numbers. You don't know who the seller is. You don't know who the buyers are. Now, when we broker these transactions, at a certain point, 
often a non-disclosure agreement is signed between the buyers and the sellers. Um, the information that's confidential includes the patent numbers, the seller's identity, the infringement information. Obviously, patent information, patent numbers and the substance of the patent is all publicly available. That's not confidential. But the fact that a patent is available for sale, that can be sensitive and that's confidential. The seller's identity can be confidential, especially if the seller, the patent holder has been hiding their identity from the assignment database. And uh, information on infringement is obviously very sensitive if that's exchanged between the buyer and the seller, and also licenses. The information on licenses, licenses often have a confidentiality clause in them, so disclosing the license from the seller to the buyer can be problematic if you're a seller. So non-disclosure agreements are also part of this cloak of confidentiality. Basically, the seller can protect themselves through non-disclosure agreements and other, uh, other issues, but they have to disclose their identity at some point. The buyers generally can remain anonymous and often do in these transactions. So in times of patent wars, is a very good reason for intellectual property buyers to remain anonymous, to engage agents to represent them, and buy through shell companies to avoid triggering lawsuits. Patents are weapons of litigation and so are trademarks. And it's common practice for buyers to acquire in stealth mode. We'd like to thank the sponsors of Valley Mole, Tynex, the full service patent broker operating the world's largest patent and technology trading exchange. SVBS Silicon Valley Business School, delivering online courses in entrepreneurship, technology commercialization, patents and high-tech law. ValueMyPatent.com, the only place to go for rapid, realistic patent appraisals. And UnlockVC.com, helping entrepreneurs find investors and all the key knowledge they need to successfully raise finance for a startup venture.